I'm happy to have Denise Waddick here, the Executive Director at the Thamesview Family Health Team. Denise, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Eric. So I got to ask you, how are you and your family doing during this very interesting time in our community, province, and the whole world for that matter? Uh, well, I can tell you that my family is extremely active. We're a very busy bunch. Uh, both my children, age 15 and 13, are typically involved in competitive sports. So you can imagine how uh, this pandemic has had a significant impact on our family. Uh, but one thing that we have done is we've done a really great job at reconnecting with one another and appreciating the simple things in life. And we're spending a lot more time with one another and really getting to know one another and reconnecting in, a le in an op opportunity that just didn't exist six months ago for us. So it's been good. I think at this point in the last two months, I think a lot of families have reconnected over these, you know, social media platforms, you know, playing games and whatnot, yeah. keeping our, our mental sanity uh, kind of all in there. And uh, I think this has been an interesting time for us all. So uh, COVID-19 hit us approximately about two months ago and uh, things were business as usual for most clients uh, seeking medical help. But uh, what has kind of changed for your clients' needs, uh, kind of the before and afters? Well, we're sort of finding that uh, our patients' needs haven't really changed much, but the general consensus, some of the feedback that we've received within our community is patients are a little more reluctant to come to the office, uh, to come to the clinic, but um, rest assured, we want to make sure patients understand and know that their doctor or nurse practitioner is still very much aware um, and available and here to provide the necessary care to them. Uh, now, their care might be done a little bit differently than historically, where they may be uh, seen through a video appointment or a telephone appointment versus in person. Uh, but historically, the patient needs haven't really changed, but how we're providing that care has changed slightly. Um, but we're still able to meet the needs of the patients. Uh, kind of just a follow-up question. Uh, now mm -hmm. that we're phases of Ontario opening up, uh, new services are going to be implemented. Uh, is there going to be still that difference between a virtual, uh, a virtual look over rather than a physical look over? You know, there's a lot of conversation happening right now in the primary care world where we're really understanding and learning that there's certainly benefit in maintaining phone visits and video visits, and we don't see that leaving anytime soon. Uh, so what will most likely happen is uh, the physicians, nurse practitioners, even our allied health professionals will reevaluate. And if the opportunity exists where a patient has access to internet from their home, and it makes sense where they could provide the care um, virtually, and they're still getting the same benefit, impact, and access, then we'll certainly continue to do so. Obviously, there are some appointments that just you can't get around the physical assessment and they need to be seen in person, um, whether it's an allergy shot, if it's a, a follow-up visit for our pregnant moms, um, you definitely still, there are times where you do require that in-person visit. So that won't necessarily go away. Um, so really it'll be a matter of looking at all of those different types of appointments. And if we can continue to do the virtual care, we certainly will uh, keep that uh, ongoing. That's great. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, a lot of needs for all these services that uh, during COVID, and I think we're going to still continue seeing uh, the needs as we progress through 2020, which will be an interesting year. Uh, senior levels of government have been amazing, uh, giving relief to all healthcare providers and whatnot. Um, did Thamesview Family Health Team uh, require any additional funding support uh, just for uh, any extreme workloads? Uh, so there's been some special funding programs that have been offered through the government to give some relief to our overhead budget, which has been greatly appreciated. Of course, there are some human resource programs available to any family health team uh, for staff that uh, look to perhaps uh, take a voluntary layoff or help to sort of um, uh, fill those gaps and needs when maybe their hours are um, or have been re reduced. Um, so those have been greatly helpful um, for physicians and any family health team staff that would require that. Um, the government has also really stepped in and ensured that we had the personal protective equipment that we require. Of course, when you're seeing these patients in person, um, you do require additional PPE. And uh, it's been very difficult to get PPE uh, lately because, of course, the entire world is in the same boat as us. Uh, but the ministry has done everything they can to ensure that we do not go without PPE, which has been um, a wonderful partnership. 
so they continue to provide at no cost um, the necessary PPE to ensure that we can continue to provide those in-person visits. They've also uh, provided some additional support to allow physicians to be able to provide virtual appointments uh, and the compensation that's attached to that. Typically, uh, a patient gets comp a physician sorry gets compensated by providing that care in person. And so there's been some work from the back end. Uh, from the ministry's perspective to ensure that there is compensation associated to a telephone or a virtual appointment um, so that that care, when it's appropriate, can continue to happen. So they've sort of um, uh, escalated that so that that could happen quicker. Um, and that's been a huge benefit for the patients as well. And of course, they've been hugely supportive in providing guidelines and policies to help us with day-to-day -day operational um, processes and procedures to ensure that we can provide a healthy and safe physical environment for our staff and patients. Yeah, no, I, I think anybody in these uh, facilities who need to care uh, obviously want to feel safe, and yeah, you guys have done a great job uh, forward. So, kind of to our next question, I know now uh, COVID-19 testing facilities are open uh, earlier, it was only special testing. Um, are you guys going to happen to see an increase for uh, people who in case want to get tested for COVID? Yeah, so now patients really they can refer themselves to the testing sites. They're not requiring any referral or recommendation from their physician. They can just show up and be assessed to, de to be determined whether or not a test is warranted. So we've really come a long way in that respect. Um, but now I think as things start to open up, uh, there may be additional question and concern from a patient's perspective to want to just double check and make sure that there, um, there's little to no possibility that they could test positive for COVID. And so that option is there for them, which I think kind of alleviates some concern um, from their end to know that if they're a little bit worried about symptoms, that they can check to see whether or not um, they test positive. Um, so that's been helpful and supportive as well. Yeah, no, um, we're seeing all these emergency services open up and COVID, uh, it's great that now it's being open to the public. Um, as we're opening up in phases, are you aware of any type of services that weren't normally uh, able to be done, but now as we're opening up that are going to be uh, available to patients that may need this special uh, procedure or anything of that sort? Well, I, I'm not sure if I, if I have any ideas on new. One of the areas that I, we are identifying as a, a huge need for our patients is uh, coping and the mental health uh, needs. And so uh, we're finding that patients are struggling with coping um, whether it be because they lost their job, uh, there's financial issues, uh, self-isolation, perhaps they had a loved one who passed away during this time and they're not able to grieve appropriately, they can't see their loved ones to console and work through that. Um, so we're finding that um, the mental health component has been a huge demand for our patient population. Uh, so by us being able to increase our visits virtually and by phone. And we're also exploring right now the ability to see patients in person when those two options aren't available or appropriate. Um, that's probably the biggest piece that we're noticing. Um, just how do you manage um, uh, from a mental health perspective to get through this pandemic from um, an emotional, um, behavioral um, uh perspective so we had a great interview yesterday with alan stevenson uh the ceo of Land Kent, uh, mental health and he said very much the same thing that you know a lot of people are going to be struggling with this uh trying to move forward uh, like you said with job losses um times you health family health center has a lot of great online resources um do you have anything that would be kind of interesting to be sharing uh, as we kind of move forward that would be available virtual for uh, some, of the, some of these things so we are starting to and have uh, offered some online virtual meditation groups and um, with mental health now being identified we're going to start to be able to ramp up and, and provide some additional groups uh, via online virtually uh, so we can provide additional support that's probably one thing that thamesview has been well known for uh, we've provided a number of groups, uh, uh, mental health groups and support groups. And by not being able to offer those in person, uh, we are looking to explore how we can continue that support for our patients virtually. 
um, because there's a huge need for it. So that's something we look forward to um, bringing back and expanding within our mental health um, team. So we have three and a half social workers uh, and they're very busy, they're very active. They're also uh, very creative in finding new ways on how they can support. So there is uh, resources online currently uh, and we hope to uh, provide additional resources, uh, new opportunities to connect with our patients. Um, and most of our groups are not only for our patients, but for the entire public. So you don't have to be a patient at TEMSU to participate, which is uh, a great benefit as well. Denise, we got to thank you and uh, all your team uh, as they worked very hard through this front line, uh, the front line teams that have worked very hard through this uh, time. And uh, we thank you for all the work you guys have done. Is there anything else that you would like to add about the Tennessee Family Health Center that uh, that would be special to some of our viewers? Just to uh, to know that your family health team, your family doctor, your nurse practitioner, they are open and available to serve you. So if you're feeling unwell or you have a symptom that you would typically go see them for and call and make an appointment to please continue to do so uh, because we are open and the, the care may be a, a little bit different than what you're used to, but nonetheless, I can assure you that it will be good quality care. Uh, our allied health professionals are also still here to provide that necessary support. Most of it at this time will be done through phone or video, um, but over time as we start to um, open up and uh, uh, reintroduce our services, uh, we, will still, we will continue to be there for our patients and our community. That's great. And you know what? After all this is said and done, I hope as a Cham Canada's community, we can band together and have ourselves a big CK block party to yes. uh, celebrate all the hardships we've endured. And, oh, and again, thank you for all that you and your team have done and uh, continue to do as we uh, continue through this uh, COVID pandemic. Great. Thank you.